What's happening in New Zealand around standards, what's happening in Australia around NAPLAN, isn't something just happening in those nations outside of what's happening globally. And they've all bought in in a big way. It costs nations a lot of money to participate in PISA. The nations pay to participate. So it's not coercion from the OECD, it's the nations wanting to be in. And then the meeting of the education ministers there, there's normative pressures around policy convergence. There's so, so there is a notion that you can't improve what you can't measure. That, that's the sort of motto. And I think that's interesting to think about whether that's really true or not. Uh, and I found policymakers in Australia, where I tried to have discussions about that, find it very difficult in this policy as numbers world to think that you could possibly have narratives. Like I interviewed the most senior person in Australia who, who with the previous government agreed to the targets the state set about improvement on the tests. And she agreed with every one of my criticisms and said, okay, I agree. How can we measure all of these other things? And she, she immediately went to the notion we've got to have more and more tests. So there is a way in which the, the global and the national discourses around this and notions of test-based accountability, I think, have come together. What's happened with the OECD and its strengthened scale, more and more nations in, its strengthened scope, more and more things starting to be tested, and there's more and more that are going to come in. So financial literacy was one thing that was in last time. Uh, there's pressures for more and more things. There's actually talk about whether there's another PISA needed at another level earlier in the system. And th there's an attempt at PISA also to get to more explanation. So they're actually wanting to document what teachers do and try to map it against the sorts of results and see whether there's some sort of pedagogical ex explanation. Um, and there's also this PISA-based test for schools which I think is enormously interesting. But it's all, the PISA-based test for schools has been totally funded by American philanthropic money. America achieves, and in that there's a lot of Bloomberg money um, and other huge philanthropic Carnegie Foundation money. But it's just interesting to me, whereas PISA was developed in the late 1990s under pressure from the US who was concerned about falling standards and they wanted international comparisons. And Japan and the US pay half the overall money that goes to the OECD so, and they always have the assistant secretary, one of those nations, they're powerful. So what the US wants it usually gets at the OECD because its money is so significant. But um, so, so, so what you've had, it's become more powerful, it's become powerful inside the OECD. Professor Lingard argues that in a globalised marketplace data has become the glue that holds the system together what's holding things together are all, is all this data. You know, the measurement of inputs, the measurement of outcomes, and it, that keeps the system operating. And it's what a whole range of people in new governance are arguing that comparison has become a form of governance and control. So the way systems are run and, and the control of principles, say, in self-managing schools is comparing that school's performance with this school's and this school's, and, and, and that's the way governance and it, that functions both internationally through PISA, but also TIMS and PEARLS, but also through you know, national standards, national testing, and all of that. And it's how education's become central to economic policy. But all of that, I think, does have international and national developments. And it is a drive, a converging push towards notions of test-based, top-down accountability, international tests and national ones but always, always, always played out in vernacular ways. So it's, the pressures are similar in New Zealand and Australia, but they've been played out differently. Professor Lingard argues that the growth of data around schooling has been accompanied by a parallel rise in edu business. The largest of these businesses have the potential to become central players in international education. You know, Diane Ravitch, who was an Assistant Secretary for Education under one of the Bushes, now has recanted all of her stance. Well, in terms of edgy business and the involvement of people like Pearson, she actually calls the United States education system now the United States of Pearson. That all of the state testing and the way that's aggregated to international, um, a lot of it's done by Pearson, the actual creation of the tests. Every state in Australia, bar Queensland, 
commissions Pearson to analyse the state's NAPLAN performance. So there's a way in which edgy business is really coming in and they can see that this data world, it's why I put up that IBM ad, you think about it, like in all the airports at this moment in Australia, and there's billboards in the city of this data is a game changer. Now it's in the context of the Australian Open tennis, you know, there's tennis courts and balls and rackets. But think about it for a moment. This is IBM. How much is the advertising cost? It's really interesting. Don't you think that, and I think it's part of that new world and part of those new modes of governance, I think is the enhanced role of edgy businesses and all of this. Um, and I think there's democratic questions to ask about all of that, it's potential democratic deficits. You know, and I didn't have a chance to mention the learning curve, which is a recent document from Pearson, which has actually gone to a meta-meta analysis. It's got put all the PISA data together with Tims and Pearls, and then with a huge range of other data, and it's going to try to develop this for all the nations on the globe.